On April 13, 2009, the U.S. National Archives of Administration provided nearly 250,000 pages of documents during the Reagan administration, including its personal journal. In this, on 11 June 1985, the president wrote, We have lunch with five top scientists in the field of aerospace. It was fascinating. Space is really the last frontier, and some of the developments there in astronomy are science fiction unless they are real. Learned that our transfer capacity is such that we could put 300 people in orbit. This is curious because Space Shuttle has a maximum of 8 people and only 5 for spaceflight. Even fully loaded, it would be impossible to place and maintain 300 astronauts in orbit. Reagan has revealed the existence of a highly classified space program that could host hundreds of astronauts in orbit. Is this about alien or human technology? Or is it about both of them combined? If both nations are aware that there's an extraterrestrial presence and that that is potentially hostile, then cooperation is the only route to go. It's the only way that we could actually achieve some sort of mutual defense of the planet Earth. On the other hand, disclosure in the press of this information will prevent and completely dismantle the various manipulations of an eventual alien invasion or other similar rumors that are being made to escape the black operations. I'm hereby directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. In The Dynamic Theory of Gravity, Nikola Tesla explains how the gravity is related to the electromagnetic force. This is a model that deals with matter, ether, and energy, and how these three things relate to one another. It is a unified field theory that unites all the existing fundamental forces and the responses of the particles themselves in a theoretical framework. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, Tesla continually talked about anti-gravity ships that could derive power from his Wardenclyffe towers that were going to be broadcasting power. He claimed that these ships did not have wings or fuel. They were completely electric. This theory, proposed by Nikola Tesla, has been so suppressed because the big powers do not want this information to be published. If you are wondering why, just remember that Tesla believed in clean energy. No one needs a soothsayer to realize how the oil and natural gas companies would obviously stand against such development. Nikola Tesla proposed that gravity is a field effect. At the time he announced his critique of Einstein's work, he was criticized by the scientific community. Tesla talked about atoms working like solar systems and that light could work as a wave and a particle. Einstein got a Nobel Prize for saying light worked like a particle. So why is he removed from the history of quantum physics when he really belongs at the heart of it? Today, this same theory is now being given a more serious consideration by scientists. At first, this theory was developed between 1892 and 1894, during the period when Nikola Tesla was conducting experiments with high frequency and high current potential. In 1897, when Tesla presented his theory of the dynamics of gravity, he said that all bodies emit microwaves whose voltage and frequency are determined by their electrical content and relative motion. More than a hundred years ago, Nikola Tesla managed to measure the microwave radiation of our planet and concluded that it is only a couple of centimeters of wavelength. Tesla went on to say, that the frequency and voltage of the microwave radiation on Earth was greatly influenced by the speed and mass of our planet. The gravitational interaction with other celestial bodies, such as the Sun, was determined by the interaction of the microwaves between the celestial bodies. Tesla confirmed this by placing two metal plates at a distance and electrifying them with high voltage, high frequency currents, Tesla currents, or microwave. With sufficient high voltage and frequency, the space between them became solid state. He also worked with a single plate, zinc, one-eighth of an inch thick by 12 inches, weighing approximately 2 pounds, suspended in the air. The idea that Tesla might have worked 
on an anti-gravity device is very plausible to me. Although these principles guided his research and his experiments of the future, Tesla did not announce his theory until near the end of his life, after being disappointed by the war. The dynamic theory of gravity is not mentioned as it should, and this is because the government of the United States classified the file. Unfortunately, few details were publicly stated by Tesla about his theory. The issue of how space is curved by gravitational effect, leading some to believe that Tesla did not understand Einstein's theory, was not about curving space at all, but about a curved space-time. There is disagreement about Tesla's exact understanding of Einstein's theories. The truth is that there was a great difference between Tesla and Einstein. While the former wanted the best for humanity, the second defended the big powers. According to this theory, the concept of ether is similar to what dark energy would be. Tesla said that space was not curved and that all forces were related to each other, both the speed of sound and the speed of light and x-rays. To solve this phenomenon, he used his deep knowledge of mathematics, believed by many to be Venusian. This technology about anti-gravity has been known for a long time, but it is not convenient to make it known. It is much more lucrative to have limited energies in order to be able to impose astronomical prices, as in the case of oil. It is also better to have short-lived and polluting energies to keep the business booming.